In podcast episode number 57, I talked to Sarah Michiels about somatosensory tinnitus. Sarah is a physiotherapist, manual therapist, and assistant professor in musculoskeletal rehab at Hasselt University in Belgium. Her special interest is tinnitus, and she has published many papers on the topic in the last 10 years. We started out by talking about the definition of somatic or somatosensory tinnitus. Sarah explained that in this type of tinnitus, input from the muscles or joints in the upper cervical spine and temporomandibular area are either changing an existing tinnitus or they are the cause of tinnitus in rare cases. Then we talked about the pathophysiology of somatic tinnitus. Sarah mentioned that in most cases there is a combination of dysfunctions in the cervical spine and jaw that lead to the problem. What happens is that afferent information from these areas are collected in the brainstem and passed on to the somatosensory cortex. At the same time, there are connections of these afferents with auditory areas of the brain, which make sure that we, for example, don't hear ourselves while chewing. A constant increase in tension in masticatory or cervical muscles can change input to this auditory area, which can lead to an increase in spontaneous activity in the auditory brain region and thus increase or produce tinnitus. We both stated that this mechanism is similar to cervicogenic headache, although in referred head pain it's all about pain perception, while in tinnitus the focus is on a completely different area of the brain, namely the auditory area. We quickly touched on prevalence and etiology. Sarah explained that about 10 to 15 percent of the general population suffers from tinnitus and about one in four of this group can be categorized as having somatic tinnitus. The most common cause for general tinnitus is hearing loss and the average patient age is 52 to 53. The somatic group is a bit younger with 48 years of age on average. Risk factors to develop somatosensory tinnitus are neck and jaw problems obviously, while stress can also be a risk factor as well. Next we discuss diagnosis for somatosensory tinnitus. Sarah told us that almost all patients are referred to her by the GP or ENT doctor who rules out red flags like a brain tumor and also other causes for tinnitus like hearing loss, an ear plug or tinnitus with a predominant psychological component. Their suspicion for somatic tinnitus is raised when patients report neck and jaw problems that can influence the tinnitus complaints and if the complaints have a temporal relationship. During the intake, Sarah first determines if a patient can benefit from physiotherapy. A first factor she looks at is tension in the suboccipital and jaw muscles. She also asks patients for a connection between a patient's pain complaint in these areas and the tinnitus, and if clenching their teeth or a certain movement can influence the tinnitus. She has published a flowchart that goes much more into detail. While there are no special tests to use for tinnitus, there is the so-called RAST tool, which stands for Rapid Screening Tool for Somatosensory Tinnitus. We have put a link to the flowchart and the RAST tool in the podcast transcript. Her diagnostic process focuses on dysfunctions of the jaw and cervical spine, so joint motion, pain provocation, myofascial trigger points, and muscle function of the deep neck flexors and extensors in the cervical spine. In the jaw, she checks if patients can open their mouth more than 40 millimeters, checks muscle tension of the masseta and temporalis muscles, and she asks about parafunctions like clenching and grinding the teeth. At last, we touched on physiotherapy treatment for somatosensory tinnitus. In Sarah's research, her group has seen improvement rates in up to 65% of their study population. What she has also found is that treatments should last at least 10 weeks for changes in muscle function to take place. In studies with a shorter duration, patients often got worse again after a few weeks. In terms of frequency, physiotherapy treatment once a week or once every two weeks is sufficient, given that patients perform their home exercises on a daily basis. In concrete, her treatment focuses on the dysfunctions in the cervical area and jaw that she has found during her assessment. That can be a combination of mobilization, stretching and strengthening of the cervical spine and temporomandibular area. 
As a final note, Sarah explained that she does not manipulate the upper cervical spine in her patients as this often leads to a temporary increase of tinnitus symptoms. If they report an increase in symptoms after exercise, this often means that they aren't performing the exercises correctly. The expectation patients should have of physiotherapy treatment is not that the tinnitus completely disappears, but that the complaints decrease. All right, so this was a brief summary of podcast episode 57 with Sarah Michiels. I hope I could raise your curiosity to listen to the whole episode and to learn more about somatosensory tinnitus. If you would like to have more resources on this episode, head to our website physiotutors.com where you can download the transcript and infographic. If you want to dive even deeper into the topic, make sure to become a Physiotutors member and download our app to watch the upcoming masterclass with Sarah on the topic. And as always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.